Hey there, it's Anna. I was out here in the garden and I just thought I would film a really impromptu little video and talk about the flowers that are bringing in the most pollinators. Because I have a fenced in garden um, and because this is the first time that this space has been utilized as a garden in a long time, the last few years since I've been gardening in it, there were some plants here when we moved in, but not like a serious garden. It took a little while for the pollinators to find the garden, but this year they really, really have. This is my third season gardening here and the pollinators have found the garden and I wanted to share with you what plants have helped to bring them in. I know for other people that are gardening in an urban setting like this or like you know maybe on your patio or something like that it's not typically a space where the bugs have been coming and so you do want to kind of have things that are going to draw them in because even if you want to grow vegetables like even if you want to have cucumbers you need to have pollinators to help pollinate a lot of those different vegetable crops um, and they're just really really important for the ecosystem of your garden so i'm going to start by talking about the plant that is my number one pollinator attractor a hundred percent and that is this lesser catmint here lesser catmint you can see the bees on it is just 100 percent the busiest plant in the garden I always come out here and find it covered in bird and bees, different like honeybees and little smaller pollinators, bumblebees, everything um, is on these plants. And I am actually growing them in containers. So I have a second container of catmint right here. As you can see, look at all those honeybees on there. Um, and this is just about a 12 inch pot. I got these plants last season towards the end of the season and they bloomed all the way through a frost until I got to like a hard, hard frost. So they start blooming about midsummer, and then they just bloom all the way until you get to a frost. Um, and as you can see, it's about a, I don't know, two foot, two and a half foot plant well contained in this um, container and just the busiest spot in the garden. Just bees on it constantly. This is my best year for pollinators. This is the season that I have noticed the most bees in my garden. And this plant is the plant where I have noticed the most of them on. So I don't know if it's my best pollinator year because as I said, it's my third season growing here, but this plant is really attracting them for sure no matter what um, and so if you're looking to add pollinators into your garden i highly recommend um, this guy i've actually got it growing near my cucumbers and i'm starting to get some good cucumber harvests and i think that's because you know they're over here with the catmint then they can come over to the cucumbers win-win for everybody for the bees and for me another really classic pollinator tractor and this is an annual um, are zinnias so you can see a lot of really small pollinators on here but I get bumblebees butterflies honeybees they all really love the zinnias and they're a pretty easy plant to grow from seed a really nice flower to have in your garden obviously beautiful colors this is a lily put mix zinnia so these are smaller um, flower heads but there are just endless varieties of zinnias so something to match whatever garden <laughs> you've got going on whatever style um, and just yeah a really super good one to bring in the pollinators um, some of them get pretty tall but there are shorter varieties too and it's kind of just what you like but i think these bright colors are helpful and i definitely um, see a lot of pollinators on zinnias so as far as like a good staple annual that you can purchase from seed and you know get started in your garden relatively inexpensively these are a great idea one of my other top plants for pollinators is the mexican sunflower or tithonia i have some growing back in this corner over here um, but it hasn't quite gotten super tall yet um, but that will create like a six to eight foot tall um basically a tree I mean, it turns into essentially like a mini tree covered with these gorgeous red flowers. I think there's like an orange and a yellow variety as well, but just like these really pretty classic flowers. I'll try to put in a picture of my, um, my flowers from last year because they were stunning. And that really brought in a lot of butterflies, which was so fun. If you have a fenced in garden, I think 
that something tall can be really helpful in just letting the pollinators know that your garden is here. So especially the first year, I had like no pollinators when I started the first couple months and I was thinking like, oh my gosh, you know, May and June, I'm like, what am I gonna do? There's, you know, I'm hand pollinating all my zucchini because what can I do? Um, and then once I had the sunflowers that I planted, once they had started to bloom, cause they were nice and tall and they got like above the fence line, then I noticed that all the pollinators started coming in. So like they literally just didn't know this was here. You know, I had my whole store open, but no customers cause no advertising. That's kind of how I think about it. So if you have a wall garden like this, like a small urban kind of situation, try something tall if you can, if you have space for it. And that might be just kind of like the sign the signposting that you need um, as far as you know bringing those pollinators in just to get you going so those are my top three if you want a perennial that is just gonna make your pollinators happy you can grow it in a container you can grow it in the ground solid perennial do the lesser catmint if you want just an annual that you can grow from seed that's inexpensive that just does the job and does the work grow a zinnia whatever kind you want if you want my top tip <laughs> for getting pollinators into like a small garden or an urban garden situation like this where there haven't been gardens before, then I recommend growing something tall like a sunflower. Mexican sunflower is super, super fun and the butterflies really love it. Now I'm gonna show you just some of my like honorable mentions <laughs> and other favorite plants that the top pollinators are loving. So I recently picked up this butterfly milkweed. It needs a little bit of water, but um, it's, a some kind of butterfly weed milkweed I don't even it wasn't really even labeled at the garden center um, but things like this you know they're called butterfly weed for a reason the pollinators really do love them I had a bee that was like chasing me around the garden center when I went to buy this plant and literally like tried to get in the car with me because they were just you know so in love with it um, so something like this is really fun if you have space uh, for like you know a perennial um, there's perennial varieties I think this is an annual variety it was in the annual section um, of the garden center again I don't really know what it is another super perennial is Russian sage I don't see any pollinators on it right now but it could be because I'm over here uh, but that one is a huge pollinator attractor too. All the Russian sages um, are super popular. When you go down to the garden center, you'll see them just, you know, loaded, loaded with pollinators. So those are two really like just classic um, perennials that you can put into the ground and get, um, you know, a really consistent uh, kind of supply of food for, for your pollinators. They will love it. Echinaceas and Rebecca's, you know, two, um, are also good. If you're growing in a part shade situation, um, I do like uh, like Black Eyed Susans, Rebecca's, those are really nice. Um, and then I just put in a, a cone flower, which has been getting some attention from all my, my pollinator friends. Um, and that, I mean, these are staples, right? These are, are the classics, um, but certainly for a reason um, because they are much beloved by both us and by all the bees and things. Um, so super good option. As far as annuals go, like just, you know, the annuals that you pick up from the garden center as started plants, look at the gomfrinas. Um, they are really a hit. You know, petunias, bees will be on them. And of course, you know, any kind of flower will get some attention, but you can see a lot of like little, I don't know if you can see all those little pollinators on these. Um, I find that the gomfrina does get more attention really really um something that is both beautiful um, and also super super popular a really nice option and um, a fun one for the garden too so that's really good if you just want to pick up like an annual um that you know is going to be one that pollinators will like you know specifically try gomfrina they are really um quite beloved the other um, annual is Kufia. So these are beloved both by hummingbirds and by especially like bumblebees. Oh, there's a little ant in there right now, but um, these are really, really great plant uh, for any, you know, any kind of pollination. Um, and if you wanna have hummingbirds in your garden, just put a couple of these like in a hanging basket, you will have hummingbirds every year I have hummingbirds um, on mine and they're beautiful too. Um, so a really good like 
pretty much surefire way to bring in some pollinators is to get some cuvia. I had hummingbird feeders and never saw hummingbirds and then I just put one of these in a pot and like the hummingbirds came immediately and I see the bugs all over them too. So that's a really, really nice one to have in your garden. Oh, there's a bumblebee right here <laughs> on the zinnia. The bumblebees really like the zinnias and we have, we have a lot of bumblebees um, <laughs> in my garden. Uh, they're, they're definitely like a staple. They fly around, they run into you. Actually now, like when I come out in the middle of the day like this, I feel like I'm, I'm like walking through like a, like a highway <laughs> of all of these bugs because I'm trying to avoid everybody and the bumblebees run into me all the time. Um, but they're fine. They're like super gentle and I've never had an issue with them at all. Uh, but they, they love the zinnias. I think it's like an easy landing pad for them. They can get to it and do really well with those. They're on this, um, this is a little sunflower. This is the, um, what is it called? I'm blanking on the name. What is it? It's incredible. It's incredible yellow sunflower. Any kind of sunflower, as I said, is definitely a draw. So I was just having fun out here looking at all of these little pollinators flying around and dodging to try to stay out of their way. And I thought I would just, just share these with you, kind of my top three, and then some of the other ones that I've had really good luck with, just in case you're in this sort of unique situation where you're trying to bring pollinators in and get a community started <laughs> in your garden. Um, these are the plants that I would definitely recommend and have had success with. Um, so I hope you had fun just kind of taking a peek of some of the flowers in my garden and I hope you're having a wonderful day, maybe getting out in your garden as well. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.